is. Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So this is uh, part two of the uh, Kingsbury Mitchell aerodynamic bearing build. Um, this was a collaboration project with Steve Mould in uh, the UK and um, he reached out to me and uh, uh, wanted to do a project together and uh, I said yes. So uh, this is a series of videos uh, showing the construction and uh, assembly of the, uh, of the bearing. And for those folks out there that want to build their own, plans are available, just shoot me an email and introduce yourself. Tell me a little bit about you. It's always fun to hear. And uh, I'll shoot you some PDFs and you can uh, build your own and have a really cool fidget spinner. So the part we're working on today is this bit here. And clearly it's a, uh, this one's already made. Um, and in the uh, assembly drawing here, that's this uh, number two here, this is the base. Um, we're going to use the, uh, the CNC, the Makino, to uh, hog this out of a, uh, out of a disc, uh, which should be kind of fun. Um, although it's perfectly, uh, uh, it's a part that you can, you can probably easily do manually. Um, now I've made some tweaks to this and uh, the plans that I send out will, will have all the uh, uh, the red lines, uh, so uh, and I just didn't print a uh, red line, or excuse me, a corrected version here. But here's the here's a part drawing showing all the uh, the important dimensions. And the main thing I changed on this one was um, these ball seats here that were for spherical um, balls are now uh, tapped holes, as you can see here in the part. And then we're using these uh, spherical tip uh, set screws instead, um, and uh, it's just a it's just a better arrangement than a loose ball sitting in a seat. Although the loose ball works fine, and uh, you can do it that way as, if you want. Um, if you don't feel like buying some set screws, so let's go over to the Makino and uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's tear it up over there. Let's uh, cut some aluminum. Let's talk about how we're uh, we're holding this blank here. So. A couple of things I just want to point out. This is a, a prototype here, um, and you can see that it's larger than that. But because of this lug feature, um, what I've done is just kind of offset the program in the blank. Okay, the round is reasonably efficient for you know uh, stock material for this particular shape here. But this this lug, oh, you can see my little boo boo there, trying to chamfer in uh, into that. Uh, tight little spot. Um, anyway, uh, round is reasonably efficient for this particular part, but to get the whole profile of the part inside the blank, I have to shift the, the work offset kind of in the blank, so it's not just a straight, uh, a straight pickup. So the work offset, you know, if that's the center, in this case it's, uh, you know, it's up here. Okay, so that's my G54 uh, work offset. Okay. Um, on center, but shift it off. So, all right. Now, let's take a. Uh, I'm gonna take it out of the vise real quick, just so you can see here. Um, we're using these talon jaws here, which can grab something like sixty thousandths of material, a little step. And exactly what we have on the back here is a little step uh, to provide a, a nice straight uh, uh, retention feature there. Okay, so. Anyway, that's what's going on there, just so you guys can see. So I got to—I don't want to bozo it. So I'm lined up. I just happen to line up with the side of the vise there, as a um, my uh, my Y position. So let's, let's crank it down and not forget to don't pull a bozo and not tighten it up. Okay. And these things are these things hold awesome, man. Uh, they're deadly. I've never I've never chucked a part out of the. Uh, Actually, you know what? I take that back. I have popped the part out, but what it was, it was an acrylic part. It was plastic, and uh, when you hold on to the edge of, of um, plastic, and in particular acrylic, it can just chip out if you uh, you know have some machining forces on it. So that was a it was a tallish part, and it was acrylic. And anyway, it popped out. No big deal. Made another one. Okay, so let's get cracking here. All right, we're getting ready to go here. Uh, our first tool that we're going to use is uh, this one here. And what we got here, this is an, um, 
uh, AB Tools uh, shear hog. So specifically uh, designed for aluminum. It has this basically a polished razor sharp insert um, with a little corner radius. And this thing just slays aluminum. Um, let me just put it that way. So insert extra tool here like this. Now I'm gonna I'm not gonna use flood coolant on this particular one because this machine doesn't have a super duper enclosure, so I'm gonna use the the minimum quantity lubrication uh, thing here, which just kind of spits out a little bit here. So uh, I think we're ready to go. And um, so this is tool change position here, and um, what I like to do when I run a, uh, a program uh, that I reload into memory is um, when I come down to my uh, my expected Z height, uh, I just do a double check on my distance to go and make sure everything looks correct uh, um, before you turn it loose and walk away. <laughs> Yeah, anti bozo move. So, uh, all right. So far, so good. And then what I'm doing is I'm just throttling the uh, the rapid traverse until I get to my uh, my plunge height. There it goes. Now it's not cutting anything right now, as you notice, because it's a sod blank. And so there's some length variation in the, in the sod blank. So I start a little higher. Okay, there it goes. I start a little higher than I need to to accommodate any uh, variation in the blank height. I hope that makes sense. Okay, now it's going to cut. There we go. Five thousand RPM and a uh, hundred feet per minute. Okay, watch out. <laughs> getting, a, getting a shower. Okay. And uh, nothing too radical with this tool here. Just a uh, a, through, a center through hole. Five eighths diameter, 850 RPM, and uh, six inches per minute feed rate, I believe, is uh, what this guy's doing here. And it's a peck drill cycle, so it's uh, you see the chips are real short, and it keep, it prevents uh, chips from uh, bird nesting around the drill and. Uh, giving you a hard time. Now this, this tool is actually going to run a long time here. It's uh, doing a, a center uh, um, or insulating bushing hole right now and then it's going to do the profile and a whole bunch of other stuff. So this one's going to run a lot. See the offset in the uh, in the um, in the blank. That's uh, five thousand RPM, uh, forty inches a minute. It's a three-flute um, active 
Pro uh, end mill. next tool uh, we're going to do some chamfering now uh, break some of these edges and it's really a good thing to do your deburring in the machine if you can and um, now this is a, uh, a chamfer mill it's an inserted chamfer mill made by uh, OSG and I kind of like it because uh, you can swap inserts when you go between um, soft materials like aluminum and hard materials like steels um, and then there's no Z, uh, Z change, so uh, you don't have to recalibrate the tool. So one nice thing about it. Um, now, it's a little bit big, uh, is my only kind of complaint about it. And we have to switch to a smaller one in a, um, a different spot here. So I'm also going to switch over to the um, MQL here. Uh, because you don't need a lot. Now with chamfering tools, um, you want to run them pretty fast and you want to feed them kind of slow. And the reason for that is uh, uh, it's a single lip tool, right? So if you feed them too fast, you get kind of a, a notchy finish. So feed them slow and you get a nice smooth, uh, nice smooth chamfer. So let's go for it here. can't do chamfers like that by uh, by hand. It's pretty hard to do. This is a, a hot hot whammy way to do it. So. Now let's see right up into the corner there. next tool uh, that we have is a tap, uh, 1032 tap, and um, I kind of like these, um, um, I call it their bills holder, B-I-L-Z, is the, the person, the guy Bill, I think, that uh, invented these. So what you have is you have a tap carrier, and then you have the tap in that, and that fits in a kind of a universal holder. So if your machine has rigid tapping capability, um, so you can go between sizes really easily, right? Um, and then the other thing you can do is when the tap gets screwed up, which they never do, you can just pop it out and uh, make sure I got it in there, right? 
it's got a square driver down in there. There it goes. And then it locks it in there. So you break a tap or whatever, you can just put a new one in and uh, you know, off you go, Bob's your uncle, right? Um, or if um, you know, you can set up a bunch of different sizes uh, with the different carriers. Anyway, I just happen to like it and uh, I figured I'd show you that too. Oops, don't let it pop out there, Mr. Wigger. And let's get some, uh, make sure I got some uh, liquid love going there. And let's tap a hole. So I'm pretty conservative when it comes to uh, rigid tapping. Um, I kind of go by the uh, the 10 inch per minute uh, rule. So you can see I'm tapping actually fairly slowly. Um, in this case, 10 inches per minute equals 320 RPM with a 32 uh, inch, 32 pitch tap. Well, sometimes you get lucky. I happen to uh, be using this uh, this smaller chuck inserted in the big chuck. Um, this chuck won't close below like seven eighths of an inch, or one inch actually. And uh, so I have this six jaw that I can stick in there. It's on a square spud, and uh, when I have smaller work to do. But I lucked out because it I can do an inside grip uh, on this little monkey here, and uh, save myself a little bit of uh, of messing around there. So it's kind of. Now you got to be a little bit careful expanding on the inside, especially these are cut away here. I don't want to do anything bad, so uh, I'm just giving it a little, little love snug there, and then we'll uh, tap it in a little bit just over, over the jaws, make sure that it's snug a bug, okay? And then uh, we'll face this mess off the back, and then cut our recess in here, so. Thing good about interrupted cuts is the uh, the chips break really nice. Cutting the, uh, there's a little recess under the back side here. And um, so I put a little witness mark here. I just want a little rim that's about 10 millimeters wide so that this sits on the kind of the outside edge. So I'm gonna hollow out the, uh, um, the foot, I guess we call it. So, uh, and you know, there's nothing fussy about this. We're just gonna go in about a millimeter like so, and then we'll just come out like that until we uh, get to our line and call it quits. I actually have a number on the DRO so uh, I can stop where I want to stop. We just have this little weird edge to deburr now.